100 years ago, women couldn't vote. Only white men had that privilege. Toward the late 1800s, the women's suffrage movement was catching steam with well-known figures like Susan B. Anthony leading the charge. What you may not know, a lesser-known suffragist who played a major role in the movement was from Warren. First News anchor Mandy Knoll is bringing us the story of Harriet Taylor Upton. Everything we read about her, people loved her. Born in 1853 in Ravenna, Ohio, Harriet Taylor Upton was the daughter of lawyer turned congressman Ezra Taylor. The family moved into this home downtown Warren during her childhood. Her mother was almost always ill while her father worked in Washington, D.C. Would go to Washington often and would take care of it. <clears throat> and she became friends and well known and highly respected in Washington. It's there, and through her connections, she met Susan B. Anthony, whom many consider the mother of the women's suffrage movement. Harriet was not in favor of the suffrage movement. Kenneth Conklin, president of the Upton Association, says Anthony quickly turned her. Soon, Taylor Upton's life's mission was to secure women the right to vote. She was president of the National American Woman Suffrage Association, and through her movements there, she was very much able to get people on her side, um, to motivate people to bring suffrage to really a, a human rights issue. Trumbull County Historical Society Director Megan Reed explains Taylor Upton was a natural, having learned to navigate the political world from traveling with her father. There were many people within the suffrage movement that were looking towards states' rights specifically. But that was not enough for Taylor Upton. But Harriet Taylor Upton and her and her cohort was particularly pushing toward suffrage as a constitutional amendment, as a national right. She was such an important figure in the suffrage movement. In 1903, her home, the Upton House, became the headquarters of the National American Women's Suffrage Association for a few years. The headquarters were here uh, for approximately 10 years in this actual room that we're sitting in. It also moved to the Trumbull County Courthouse. In 1909, it moved to New York City. But Harriet Taylor Upton accomplished a lot on behalf of women's rights right through these doors inside these walls. Sojourner Truth has been here. Thomas Edison has been here. Five presidents have been here. Um, of course, Susan B. Anthony was here often. The proof is on the walls in photos and letters. Some curled or worn after being found in basements. Some perfectly preserved, like this one. Let me congratulate you on the progress suffrage is making. I have no doubt that the time is reasonably near at hand when your fondest dream will be realized. Yours very truly, that's President Hardy. President Warren Harding didn't make it to the Upton House, but plenty of others did. We have President Garfield, President Cleveland, President Hayes, President Harrison, and President McKinley. They visited, stayed, and had dinner right here to see Harriet Taylor Upton. In 1920, the 19th Amendment was certified into law. It says the right to vote should not be denied based on gender. Her story takes a sharp downward turn after her victory. During the Great Depression, Upton Taylor lost everything, including her house. It was sold at a sheriff's sale, and all of her belongings, including her collection of books, were taken out on the front porch. Her father and husband dead, she moved to California. She died out there in 1945, was cremated. Uh, there was not a lot of money, so she was put in a pauper's grave, but there was a marker. There is a happy ending. A group of historians, Conklin included, bought the house in 1989 and turned it into a museum. Family dinners, a shower, wedding. we've had numerous weddings here, graduation parties, whatever. School children toured as well, but Harriet Taylor Upton still wasn't back home. We as an organization decided that was not right, that she was in California when she did not want to leave Warren. So we worked with the California courts for about a year and a half. In 2011, her remains were shipped back here. She was given a proper burial in her backyard, which was always her haven. Then we lowered her ashes into the, this 
I guess it's a vault thing. And we put one of her books that she had written and a pamphlet from that night and the minutes from the last board meeting and so forth. That's all in, in there. 